very sad and sombre day, especially for the Metropolitan Police Service, and everyone is affected. But it is only right that I finish by mentioning the pride I feel in the swift and brave response from our officers, especially from those who, without uh, fear for their own safety, confronted the terrorists. Thank you. I'll take a couple of questions. We think we know who the um, who the attacker is, and as I say, we're working to look at associates. I know there are some proactive investigative journalists out there. I'd ask for restraint to allow our investigation to move forward without being troubled by unnecessary reporting. Can you confirm if he was a British national uh, and whether there are concerns that there may be others involved in this and the potential for other attacks? As I've said, it's an ongoing investigation. To give any more details about him, associates, or investigations would be inappropriate, so I can't answer that question. And we know the nationalities of the uh, injured. So, um, we know we have a range of nationalities and interviews with people. Yes. We're working with their uh, working with the countries. Yeah. And you're expecting a tourist Shit. location such as, um, such as Westminster Bridge. Oh. Um, it'd be wrong for me to uh, mention those now until we've managed to liaise with the host countries. 48 year olds, husband and father. Oh, shit. So, his kids are lost. Is this related oh, terrorism? God. Is our assumption? 15 years of service he's done. Tomorrow, for example. Um, his so, poor kids, so, man. In terms of levels of concern, the Prime Minister said earlier that we're not changing the national threat level. Our independent body that looks at those issues has decided that's not necessary at this stage. So we're still at the same level of severe, and attack remains highly likely. But given what's happened, as on a precautionary basis across the country, we're stepping up police patrols, Poor unarmed kids. and armed, and the public will see far more of their uh, local police forces over forthcoming days, particularly in crowded places and iconic locations. The examination of the crime scene will take many, many hours. Um, Parliament will reopen tomorrow. Some of the crime scene will um, restrict um, one end, one, some of the entrances, but business must return to normal as quickly as possible. The fucking Rambo knife. I'm not going to talk about the details of the investigation, the individual, history and associates. Please let us get on with the investigation. Who lost his life is not on. Uh, our parliamentary um, protection team, a combination of armed and unarmed officers doing different roles, and uh, sadly the officer who lost his life today um, was unarmed, supported by armed colleagues who have shot and killed the attacker. Are you surprised that he got so far? Yeah. He tried to enter Parliament and was stopped very close to the gate. <laughs> Will it have to be changed in the future then? I think it's too early to talk about matters like that. I know our parliamentarians would say they want an open democracy and the balance between protection and the ability of the public to have access is really important. I think that's something for them to consider with us over forthcoming days. One last question, Nick. You said previously that the military would be on hand to provide reassurance. In light of what happened today, is that something that the government may expect to see in the short There's no plan to do that um, in, the, in the forthcoming days. I simply made the point earlier on, in line with our normal response to a marauding terrorist attack, we have continuous to military support if necessary. They're available if necessary, that hasn't been necessary to date. Thank you for your time. Okay. Well, he's just basically said if they are needed. So, the latest details there from the Metropolitan Police. In. And as you heard, the head of the Met's counter terrorism unit, uh, he uh, was then updating us with the fact that the number of dead in this terrible incident is now five, including the attacker and the number of injured. Are, is now 40. Um, I think we can cross now to our correspondent Paul Brand, who was listening to the details of that. And interesting uh, commentary from Mark Rowley there, Paul, if you can hear me, on the attacker himself. I'm here, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Paul, I think you can hear me now. I just uh, asked you to expand on what he said about the attacker. Yeah, absolutely. The police making the absolutely clear the that thing, they know, you know when it's who live. the attacker was. Now, and they are not releasing live. his name at this point. Yeah, All they're tell. saying... Absolutely, Judy. Yeah, the police saying that they know who the attacker was. They are not releasing 
his name at this time. We asked them for the identity uh, of the attacker. They said that is not some information they're going to be putting out there just yet. But when I asked uh, Deputy, Acting Deputy Commissioner Mark Rowley whether this was related to Islamic State, he said they, they are working on the assumption that this was Islamic-based terrorism or Islamist-based terrorism. Also, some important detail about the police officer here who was killed. We know his name was Keith Palmer. He worked for 15 years as a police officer. Uh, the uh, acting deputy commissioner said that he left home today just expecting to do his job and come back to his family. He's a husband with children. The other details that we had from this press conference just now were that 40 people are now believed to have been injured uh, and three people killed on the bridge. We don't have identities of those uh, who've died just yet, but uh, the uh, Acting Deputy Commissioner said that at the moment the police focus uh, overnight will be on the motivation, the preparation and the associates of this attacker, and there will be extra reassurance on the streets, extra armed officers, as he appealed for the community to come together uh, and uh, be reassured uh, that the streets are safe. Paul, thank you very much indeed for that. And as you heard, that update is that the number of those who've died is now five, including the attacker, and the number of injured, 40. Well, some MPs were alerted to what was going on outside Parliament this afternoon by the that sound of gunshots. They were heading to a vote. The One said police well. told them to get down on the ground and crawl and to cover. cover. Another talked of panic they as they tried to reach well. safety. But it didn't take long for business inside the House of Commons to be suspended. MPs, office staff and journalists too were then subject to a lengthy lockdown shut in their offices. There was real fear in Parliament until police said finally it was safe to leave. A doorkeeper could be seen on the left of your screen running into the Commons chamber this afternoon with news that something serious was happening outside. A short time later the Deputy Speaker called proceedings to a halt. Order! The slip I am now going to suspend the sitting of the House. This House is now suspended, but please wait here. In fact, MPs were then kept in the chamber for nearly five hours while police cleared the Palace of Westminster. The very clear advice from the police and the director of security in the House is that we should remain under suspension and that the chamber should remain in lockdown until we receive advice that it is safe to go back to normal procedures. Other MPs have been near the scene of the attack on their way to vote. I looked round, but what was unusual, the police had their guns drawn and I'm hearing bang, bang, it sounded to me, or bang, bang, like this. And uh, within a moment I realised this was now not your standard sort of protester climbing over a fence. Um, and, um, uh, and suddenly a policeman appears um, uh, as get down, get down, hit the floor, get back, get back, get back, uh, get to safety, and uh, had all the MPs kind of just hit the ground. And I heard the gunshots, um, and then people started yelling, and officers saying, you know, get down, get back, get back to the main building, um, and um, and that's what we that's what we did. So it all happened very quickly, um, and uh, and then obviously we picked up from TV and Twitter what was actually happening outside. What was the atmosphere like in the house? I think um, in Portcullis House, where lots of us were, that was a mixture of MPs, members of the public obviously be visiting, uh, MP staff, journalists. It was it was shock, uh, concern about what was what was happening, what was unfolding outside. While officers were checked, those MPs not in the chamber, lords, journalists, and other staff were herded into Westminster Hall and other parts of the Palace of Westminster, where the shock of what had happened began to sink in. Probably about 400 members locked in for several hours in the lobby, and as we were picking hey, up what was happening, I think it's a shock, you know, deeper. We're, we're, we're it's we're less than a year since Joe Cox was killed, and there was a really, real sadness, a deep sadness in the house when we yeah. heard that the police um, officer who'd been attacked three, had died, and I think that really three, brought home to us that it's not about two, just MPs at all. It's actually zero, many, many people who work hard to protect our democracy, and he's you know, lost his life for doing that. And tonight, the Home Secretary paid tribute to those whose job it is to protect. We have the best police, the best security services in the world, yeah. and we must make sure that we let them get on with doing their job. The British people will be united in working together 
to defeat those who would harm our shared values. Right. Whilst the leader of the opposition said okay. security would have to be reviewed. Clearly there is obviously an issue about that security. Clearly there will be as deep as possible inquiry into that. But it's everybody that must be kept safe.